Hey guys, Tank here. Uh, we are live. It says I'm live, so hopefully we're live. I'm just waiting for the uh, video to actually catch up. Come on, let's go. So we're waiting for a bunch of people to come in. Hopefully there's going to be a bunch of people that comes in. I don't know. Um, like every night, this is uh, open mic, in other words, that uh, people can come in and chit chat and uh, talk about uh, radio control cars. So you guys are more than welcome. If you want to join in, just uh, send me an email at the tank RC um, at uh, gmail.com. Oh, Tony's in the house. I should bring my chat window right beside this monitor. I'm working with two monitors here. Better if I do that than turn my head all the time. Yes, Tony. Tony is on a beautiful island. How long are you there for, Tony? How long are you going to be there for? Hey, RC Basher boy, I did send you an email. I'm using Zoom tonight, so if you guys want to jump in, go right ahead. Particle Man, how are you doing? Tree V, how are you doing? James Swift, how are you doing? BSRC, how are you doing? Swampers RC. And uh, Rob B, RC and Fun, how are you doing? A whole bunch of people in the chat. Cool. So like you guys probably noticed on social media today, there was a, um, a lot of talk about a 6x6 six six car. And we'll go over some of the pictures, which you guys probably looked at it again, but I decided to do a video anyways and talk about that and other uh, cars that might uh, interest you guys. I know John um, actually mentioned on Facebook that Tamiya has came out with some uh, adjustable arm for the rear of their car to actually set the camber and all that. So uh, that's uh, kind of cool. And the Net Cruiser RC actually put a post on that somewhere i'll go find it so you actually woke up for a minute and saw this and said to click on it and join perfect what time is it over there Just going to get that information from you guys. And uh, it's from the RC Racer it came up with. Uh, BSRC says he's working, so he'll be jumping in and out. So uh, he's probably making sandwiches again or salad or one or the other. I'm not sure. So might as well show that off right now. We'll start off with that and we'll go to the Tamiya truck once we're a little more into this. Um, so here is the, um, from the RC Racer, Tamiya al Aluminum Adjustable Suspension Mount. So what they've came up with is some adjustability. So you just change some pieces here and you can actually change how your wheels are going to be set. So this is really neat how this is actually tunable. So by adding one of these with another one, you can really change the tunability uh, of the rear suspension. Me to tell you the truth, every time I race, I, I just left it all the same. But a lot of people, they do change it and they do say it does help. So that's pretty cool. Oh, so you're back home now. Good stuff. Yeah, it must be a long flight. It must be a very long flight to go there and back. When your case was just back, but. So that's kind of cool that. Uh, they're doing that now to actually help um, the camber and all that. Even for me, this is hard to read right now. So 
So you can tell by just by changing these, you can change how your toe in is and toe out on these things. So um, that's really cool. A lot of Tamiya fan are going to be uh, happy with that and uh, be able to tune their car a little bit more. Hey, Scottzilla, how you doing? I'm not sure if Jack's going to show up. There's something that happened today uh, with another YouTuber. Um, and Jack is not happy. Uh, he actually removed all his videos on YouTube. So um, I told him, come on, put it back. Like, anyways, I sent him a big, long message. And I told him it must be the medication because I swore again in the, in the message. But uh, hopefully he's going to be back and... Uh, he even mentioned that uh, he might not be in a stream anymore um, because of what happened. So uh, we can all have a side chat on that. So yes, Protocol Man, uh, Zoom is a cloud meeting that I'm using so people can actually jump in. And uh, what Zoom permits me to do is actually have people, uh, just like Hangout used to be, so I can uh, have people jump in, uh, interact, in video or just voice. So if you have a phone, you can turn off your phone, your camera, and just participate and ask questions like that. You don't just hear my voice and you hear other people what they're saying. Oh, there we go. Steve OD is talking in caps again. Good, Steve OD got out uh, to do some racing. That's good stuff. No, it's not. It's not me that pissed off uh, Jack. It's it's somebody else. It's another YouTuber, and uh, we can have that discussion uh, on a um, another time. He's gone for now. Uh, I don't know for how long. Uh, last time uh, that happened, uh, he was gone uh, for quite a bit. And then he came back. So uh, we'll see what's going to happen there. Don't know, but if you guys do know or got a way to get a contact of him or a hold of him, tell him you love him. Tell him uh, you you want to talk to him. Tell him uh, you want to chit chat with him. Um, let's show him some support. Uh, he needs it right now. Uh, so it's the only thing I can say. Oh, I know we can't let him give up. I I send him a, a nice long message. Um, not sure he read it yet um, because he's venting off, so um, we'll see. Yes, it is a long story, and yes, he does have a, a hater and probably more, I don't know, but uh, looks like BSRC does know a little bit of the story, so. Yes, the channel is uh, Epic RC Video Production. The channel is still there, but all the videos and all the content is gone. So uh, he probably put everything on private or like I know Jack, he probably doesn't know how to put everything on private. So he probably just deleted all the videos. He's done that in the past and then start from scratch again, which doesn't help the subscribers, but we'll see how it's going to happen. So you went crawling at the skull course. Cool. But did you go racing though? Did you go racing at the racetrack? That's the biggest question, Steve I hope so. I hope that Jack is okay. I, I hate um, when this happened. Um, this is strictly bullying. Um, and some people take it better than others. Uh, some people turn the other cheek and say, yeah, right. I'm just going to live my life and I'm just going to go and like, you keep talking and you, 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 you talk, but, uh, some people can't, some people take it in and just like explode from the inside or whatever. So, Hey, Paul Taylor, how are you doing? How come you don't have a wrench? I'll say like Steve OD, I'll give you a wrench so you can be like everybody else and be a tool in here. The wrench actually permits you guys to be moderator. 
So if ever you see somebody that puts a bad comment, uh, sometimes I don't have time to read all the comments. So uh, if you guys catch something before I do, you can actually delete it. You can actually time out a person, but please be nice. Don't do it on your friends or just as a joke. It's not a nice thing to do. Yeah, he has a very good channel and um, why people will hate it. It's a long story. It's something that happened about five, six years ago and it's coming back a little bit. So uh, we'll see. Yes, about RC. I'm, I'm waiting for some people to get in here. Come on. Let's get in here. I want more people in here. How many people are actually watching? Just a second. Let me go check. Oh, 18 people watching. That's not bad. Usually we have more people in the chat, in the video, and more or less people in the chat. But uh, now it's a pretty, a lot of people in the chat. So let me get a drink, drink of water. I talk too much and, you know, throat get dry when you keep talking and talking and talking. And my son finishes uh, hockey camp and uh, the coach told me he's very good, but he needs new hockey pads. There goes another $300. Darn, that kid's costing me a lot of money. You'll join in with Hangouts. No, Hangouts is no more, man. The last hangout is going to be, uh, we're going to do a special hangout on um, Wednesday, next Wednesday on the 31st. So we'll do um, a tribute to hangout and uh, we'll go over some of my old RC talk video and uh, laugh at some people and see, uh, I think Tony was on one of them uh, when I used to call it, uh, well, RC talk. Uh, and I'm trying to go back a little farther to see if I can find other hangouts uh, because I didn't call it RC Talk back then, but I think I started calling it RC Talk like in 2014. So I've been doing this with you guys a long time, and it's it's been a fun ride, uh, especially with Hangout. Uh, and now we have to change the format a little bit, which means I might have to go use Zoom or uh, the other stream um, stream something. Anyways, they're bugging me to go try it out. Uh, there's a lot of good feature on it. Um, and uh, I, I, might, I might try it out just for the hell of it. It's exactly the same price as uh, as Zoom, uh, but um, I think the Zoom quality is going to be a little bit better. Uh, and Zoom quality right now compared to um, Hangouts is way better. You can actually see my face now better, which I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but actually the quality is a little bit better. And it is going to be a little bit better when um, I show things on uh, internet, a web page or something like that. So that's a good thing. Yes, StreamYard is free. Uh, if you don't care too much about his logo on top, they got a big duck on top. Uh, if you do pay the $20 uh, a month. If you do pay the twenty dollars a month, you get rid of that logo, and you can actually put your own logo on it. Uh, there's a lot of cool thing on Streamyards, uh, so that's why I'm 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 leaning maybe I'm gonna try it, but uh, I'm gonna wait till this month is over for uh, Zoom, and uh, I might go with uh, something else after. Hey Steve, how are you doing? Can you hear me, Steve? Or are you still watching the other stream and your audio is not? Hey. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Do you hear that? Yes. Yes. Can you hear me? USB device. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, use your, it's your speaker. Change your speaker device. Your speaker device. Troubleshooting. I can't hear you. I got to put... I know. I'm there telling him how to do it. Listen there. to the YouTube stream. You'll hear me. Oh, shit. Hold on. I forgot my hat. I'm going to go get my hat. <laughs> he forgot his hat. <laughs> I'm going to get my hat. I got a bad hat here. Manage participant. There, Steve O. I'll... Uh... 
There, I stopped your video like that. People won't see your messed up hair. Okay. Cool. Hey, Ben, how you doing? Hey, Ben actually purchased a, uh, a truck today. He actually purchased this guy. So uh, Ben on Facebook actually put uh, the uh, order number and uh, not number, but the order information on this. I still can't hear. Yes, can't. Uh, not sure if Steve can still hear us. I'm I'm back. I just had to go grab my hat. It was inside. Okay. Wow. No, that's 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 fireworks. I thought it was lightning like our thunder. No. Holy crap. So let me get something here. Wow, did you hear that? Can you can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear that outside? Yeah, I hear something. Yeah. It sounds like a freaking war going on right now. Holy yeah, it does. Uh, I turned off your camera just to let you know because I didn't want people just to see uh, your messy hair. Yeah, I got my hat back. I'm good. Hey, how you doing? Uh, RC Mask ma Master? Popcorn. Yeah, RC Basher Boy says it's popcorn. Somebody's making popcorn inside. <laughs> Doing more than popcorn. Yeah, by breakfast says it's on pre-order. So he actually ordered the um, the new SCX10 Unimog 6x6. So this thing is going to be sweet. So when you really think about this, this is about the wheelbase of a normal SCX10, which is about 12-inch wheelbase, if not more. And then you add to it. Did you look into it, uh, Steve? I didn't even see that one yet. You got to take you got to uh, take me off and won't let me put my camera back on because it says the host doesn't have it. Oh, okay. Because I'm trying to get to uh, see the live feed, so I can exit the poll. There we go. Now I can uh, pop out the chat. So I can see the chat. No, I haven't even. Yeah, okay, I've asked that. you to put it on now. You should be able to turn it back on now. Okay, it's not on yet. No, just click on the little look icon on the bottom of your. Uh... Okay. Yep. There you go. Hey, what's up, guys? Now, who is that on the iPhone? I'm gonna rename you. Um, Shams RC Advancers. Sean's RC Adventure, okay. I gotta rename mine here. Here we go. What's up, Sean? Oh, good, Steve. Oh, how's everything? Good, man. Tired. Buck came over at uh, 11.30 this morning and didn't leave till like 6.30 tonight. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, it was like that that whole time we were at the um, RC park place. But, uh, uh, did he get good runs in this time? Did it? Yeah, yeah. Um, it sucked. My TRX four, uh, the magnets came loose, so my body wasn't staying on, so I couldn't use it. So the body would just flop right off. And then uh, it was weird when I would try to hit reverse. It wouldn't go reverse, and I kept reverse, 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 and then finally, like, the fifth time, it would kick in and just fly backwards. Um, so I think maybe the end points might be messed up. Uh, either that or the ESC needs reset back in the, whichever mode you were using it in, you know? Yeah, I think I, think I had messed it up because before I was using the Bluetooth and setting it up on the... Um, the iPad because I had separate 
models on that same controller. And today I didn't have the iPad, so it was just acting weird. Like sometimes if I turned the wheel and held it and hit reverse, it would go backwards. But um, luckily Buck brought four trucks with him. So I got to use uh, the body shell that I painted up for him, uh, the bloody one. Uh, on the TRX4, I got to use that truck and uh, the bomber, Axial Bomber. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's from where we use it, an indoor course, was it? Or? No, it's outdoor. Um, it's huge. You'll see the video. I, I'm going to make a video. I got a lot of clips of it. And it's a crawler course on one side and outdoor racetrack on the other side. Oh, that's cool. They comedy at both. Yeah, yeah. I get a little footage of the guys that were practicing on the racetrack. There's two guys, a guy with the Rustler 4x4 and another guy with the low C18. Cool. So, well, it looks like you had a lot of fun. Yeah, even, that was cool. The owners, uh, they're, they're really cool. They're, they're on my Facebook group and stuff, but they came out and put this big old canopy up so we had shade to uh, retreat to because that sun was blazing. BS, uh, BSRC, uh, uh, RC Bachelor Board wants to know what truck he's going to run next. He can't make up his mind. He's got too many of them. I would say put everything, all the name in the bu in the bucket and pick a name. <laughs> there you go. Run, yes, that's it. Run the Lego train. That's it. Castle <laughs> saying, and watch your subscription go up. Yeah, okay, a lot, of, a lot of work building them Lego trains, putting them up and down again. Now. Oh yeah. So Sean, did you see the um, the new uh, Unimog six by six? Yeah, I did. But there's some some people were showing clips of it today on their um on their Axial Fest things. Yeah. Yeah, I know it was at Axial Fest, so that's a good thing that they actually showed it off and they are actually selling tickets for five dollars to actually win it. Like wow. I almost posted, okay, where do I send the money? Where do I send yeah, my five dollars? Yeah, where do I send the five bucks is right. Yeah. You know? Like I want to win it too. I'm not there at Axial Fest, but I should like to win it. Yeah, but it's cool. It'd be a cool platform for. I don't know. There's something funny looking about the front of it, though, with the, the grill or something. Yeah, the grill. They, they kept the same grill as the other one. I think they did that uh, for. Um, uh, they didn't want to pay any fees for uh, royalty fees. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. But it, it could be a really cool platform, though, to build a nice six by six on. Yeah, and I believe at Shapeway, some people already uh, did some 3D grills for it. Uh, 3D printed grills, different. That looks a little bit different. But yeah, it's going to be a beast. It's it's going to be a fun. They do have one video out of it going out. Uh, I watched it all. I wasn't too impressed on the video. No. No, it 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 was okay. Uh, it was almost as if I would have made the video. So it, it was an okay video, but it wasn't professionally made, I found. Yeah, for the money Axial has, like they could splice out and somebody to make a professional video. Yeah. It'd but that cool. thing, it's going to be pretty big because, uh, like I was mentioning, that the first wheels, the wheelbase of the first wheel is about 12 inch. So the whole truck is going to be kind of big. Wow, yeah. Yeah, because that's how he's thinking. I wonder if one of them, you know, the killer body, the one like the, the one, uh, what's the name of that killer body? But it has, it's set for six by six. I wonder if that would fit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But it, but it probably is very long of the front. The first two wheels are 12 inches alone. Yeah. And it is using the AR44 axles with a pass-through to actually extend it to the back. 
this I'm not too keen about. I I, I, I don't like this in a six by six. I, I would have liked better a second dry shaft and then it comes down and supply the other wheel. Yeah, yeah. Like like a real truck would be made. Or yeah, some wheel trucks. I think that's the way cross R C do their six by six. They yes. put our case in there and then drop it down too. So they do, uh, it is the uh, one piece uh, pre-molded uh, AR, um, AR44 axles. And the piece that they have here, I'm not too sure how strong it's going to be because there's a joint right here. So they did not go farther with the piece of plastic. So I don't know how much torque that's going to put on this joint. Yeah, because it seems like a fail point. Because uh, to me, they, they should have went farther with the plastic and, and actually went up to here with the plastic and went farther and just to make sure that it actually held up longer. But uh, hey, if they probably tested it, so it probably is strong. I don't know. But the whole piece in the center is a full piece. You can see it here in this picture. Uh, it's a full piece that comes all the way across. Mm. So I, I don't think it's going to break, but... Uh, on the outside, there's only a little bit. There's only maybe an inch of it that's actually following it. So, yeah, I'm sure that'll be probably some of the first upgrades done to it, probably. Yeah, and again, they went with the two-piece bed also, just like the team associated one, uh, which permits them to uh, go lower with the bed, which is nice. Gonna make more for realism because the bed is lower. Yeah, because I think that's what um I know what Vanquish just done with their new one. They lower they made the interior and the bottom of the bed all one. Yes. To make the bed a bit lower as well. Yes, it is the Vanquish, not the team associate. That's right. Yeah, I said team associate, it is a Vanquish. You can see the joint on this one where it is right now. I do have some other, the bigger picture that I should show that. That's right on the joint. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, it is. Uh, I like the tires. The ti uh, I like the military tires. I wish they would have painted it a different color, but. Yeah, they sort of look like the, the tracks, the tactical. Yes. Tracks. Mm. Tracks uh, I like good. that they put a hinge at the back. That's cool. But man, that's going to be a long body. It's going to be a lot of strength on this uh, on this hinge. It's going to be a lot of weight on this hinge. They do have a metal horn, which Team Associated doesn't, which is kind of stupid. Uh, they do have light lights, and lights are included. There's four lights, the red ones at the back, and the two lights in the bumper. You can buy other lights for an extra cost for the four light buckets here. There's four light buckets, so you can actually put eight light into this thing. Yeah, and of course, a weird looking front. Yeah, uh, Spectrum STX2 transmitter, and we know that some people that are in our bunch love this one. <laughs> All metal gear transmission, which is good, and a 35T motor. Hey, look at that! The brush motor that's water resistant. As far as I know, they were always water resistant. Yeah, most brush motors breaking them in, dropping them in a glass of water. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. You get a spectrum receiver um, servo, which is waterproof, and you get the uh, uh, AE5L ESC from Dynamite. That's about it for that. But do I have the pictures here? So those are the bigger pictures. Just wondering if people can see that. Yes, they can. So here's a better look at the wheel. And there's a trend that you don't like and a lot of people don't like. It is weird, especially where the lights are. It's kind of odd. Yeah. 
it's just, yeah, it's a weird shaped front or something like so. Another Unimog's not the nicest looking rig in the world anyway to start with. Yeah. One thing I found interesting, it does not have a rear bumper. You can see where the hinge is or where the screw is for the hinge. Yeah, and that's... the way the screw is, this little piece holding all that weight up front, I think this is going to snap off pretty darn quick. Yeah. They probably have no bumper to allow it to, to, allow it to swing up and yeah. down. Yeah, that makes sense. You think they would have just made a bumper on the on the shell then, like done a, a cast bumper or something? Yeah, on the shell it, it would have uh, followed the it would have opened. The problem with not being uh, well, it's not a class two anymore, so that's the only disadvantage because it does not have a rear bumper. Yeah. Here you can see that this piece of plastic holds all four of these links. All the rear links are actually on this middle piece. It's kind of neat how they've done the piece, how they engineered it. Yeah. Like I mentioned, I, I, I don't think this is long enough. They should have went a little longer, but they, they, they might have did the math already on it, so. Yeah, uh, uh, Basher Boy is saying he's, he, he would put an aftermarket hitch on it. And again, here you see that how it's open all the way to the back and the hinge and the one wire that's supplying yeah. the lights. And here you can actually see where the, uh, hopefully this is good resolution for you guys now on uh, YouTube. I know before using uh, Hangout, it wasn't, but it should be better now. So you can actually where, see where the joint is and where this piece of plastic is joining both of them. And how this is a full piece of plastic on the bottom that holds all the link. Yeah, I don't know why Axie will do that. Even the SAX-10, like they put a lot of plastic parts in it. Well, it's probably for cost. It's cheaper to put uh, a, a plastic mold than it is an aluminum piece. No. And if they're going to mass produce, if they're saving $2 per truck, well, that's a $2 save. Yeah, I guess. Trucks, yeah, that's a lot of money. Yeah. They'll rely on all the aftermarket parts again, too. Yeah. Or they'll come up with a uh, marked up uh, body, a marked up uh, price and hop up and sell it. Yeah. They'll probably come out with a kit version with a few different options, maybe, too. Yeah. Well, what is too bad is that the transmission is right in the middle of the truck. Like, when are they going to start making trucks with the motor all the way up front, like some of them? Like that, you can have a 3D motor on it and have a normal transmission. Get rid of this type of transmission and just put the other one. Yeah, put it right up front. Like. Yep, so you can have it more scale. Hey, Recreation, how are you doing? So there's their server, servo, and it looks like they gave they put some, they put in some uh, wire management, which is a good idea. There's a beautiful transmission, and it shows the four link. It's kind of neat how everything is all hidden nowadays compared to before when we first yeah. started having the servo mounted on top. You could really see the servo, but now... And the good old shocks that people love and people hate. It's a hit miss with these shocks. I, I, never... I actually like them shocks. I think they do really great on my SCX-10. Yeah, same here. They work great on my CSEC 10. I never had any issues with them. Once in a while, I, I open them up, I change the oil, and you just keep maintenance on it. Yes, they do drain, but that's normal. You just do maintenance. Yeah, that's it. All the shocks, eventually, they'll drain. The seals dry out, like, so. Yeah. Battery, the vertical battery tray. 
Some people like it, some people don't, but but it is a nice truck. Like some people are going to pick it up and uh, paint a different color and maybe age it or whatever, but seems to be uh, going to be a fun truck to see on the trail. That's for sure. Going to have to make my trails harder now. Yeah, they're gonna have to, they're gonna have to make bigger gates to let that thing through though. Well, the the width is going to be the same. It's just your turning radius is going to be uh, affected by that. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Like you know, you're going to need twice the room to turn. Yeah. But I can just hear the people now, probably on the social media, are, are probably bitching and saying, uh, "What's this? A Unimog that does not have portals?" Well, it does exist. Some people do have Unimogs without portals. Yeah. There's a lot of rigs out there without portals right now, even your rigs. Like pe yeah. people, for people forget that like G-Made were actually the first ones to come out with a portal axle on like their G1. Like everybody thinks Trax has come out with a portal axle, but G-Made were doing it for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, there, that, that like spider looking truck they have, that G1 or whatever. It had portal axles when it first came out. Yeah, it's true. Uh, RC Mass Master says, uh, you mentioned classes. How are trucks classes? Uh, that That is a very good question. Um, and we could do a whole, talk a whole night about different classes there's class in the world right now there's class zero class one class two and class three rigs so there's a lot of different classes uh class zero and class one class zero is your it's a typical truck or car that you would drive to work it's it's just a normal car no hop-ups no nothing that's class zero like probably my winnebago would be my winnebago is a class zero and class zero you need to have a hood that opens Door that yeah. opens. Get glass. Bring your cup. Uh, you need uh, a hood that opens. You need a 3D scale engine to be a class zero. So you need to be as, as realism as you can. Class one is smaller tires. And it's going to look like a, a truck that you drive uh, to work and back. Uh, and then class two, those are tires with bigger 1.9s or 2.2 tires. Uh, you do see them on the road once in a while. They're those guys with uh, uh, trucks and they have monster wheels on. They're really jacked up. They do drive it to work, but you do need a front yeah. bumper. You need a front bumper with the um, that is as wide as the windshield. That's your front bumper. Also, you need a rear bumper. Uh, you also uh, need uh, for class two rail. So you, you do need chassis rails for class two. So the Wraith is not a class two, but that's why some people, they actually insert the Wraith, um, uh, the cage, SE Extend 2 cage in the Wraith, and it does fit. There's ways to fit it. And then you have the Wraith with a frame, and then it actually counts. So there is some mock-up. And then class three, it's Wraith, uh, rock bug, buggy and all that. Uh, 2.2 tires and bigger. So it, there's a lot of different things. Maybe I can find you uh, where you can actually go see it, find the rules for that. What happened, Steve? I don't know. He was here, then he disappeared. Yeah. We must have uh, scared him off. I'm just trying to find the circle rules for this. Uh, copy link address here. There's a PDF. I'm going to post the link here. 
Um, this is the circle rule. So right there in those rule, it tells you a lot of description of what um, classes are what. I'm just trying to open up right now myself. Yeah, class one, class two, class three. See, in this one, they don't even have the class of zero. Which year is this? The one I posted. Oh, man, that's an older one, 2012. But uh, for Circa rules, um, not everybody goes by them, but a lot of people uh follow it so when you go to a competition best thing to do is asking them okay which rules do you follow uh, my truck do you do you guys do a class what do you guys do so best thing to do is is actually uh ask where you're going to run the event yeah i'm sure there's going to be a lot of a lot of videos coming out from axial fest all weekend i'm sure Oh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of videos. So if you go there, there's home, there's rules, there's club, and there's actually a calculator that you can use to calculate how many points you're going to get with your truck. Because even though your truck is a class two or even a class one, they go by a point system. So if you have scale items into it, if you have a driver, if you have a driver with full legs, if you have a passenger, if you have two passenger, uh, th there's a lot of things that can give you points that's going to help you to win an event. But like I mentioned, not everybody goes by that. Uh, CCXRC said, change the body, you got a winner. Yes. Oh, gee, I'm late with the reading here. Yeah, I see Tony jumped in there, so he must be back from Hawaii. Is it? Yeah, he said he just came back. He had a long flight. He took a little nap, and uh, he woke up, saw the, saw the stream was live, so he jumped in. And Steve is back. I can hear something. You can hear me? Yeah. RC Recreation says, I like all RCs. That's true. But for now, I, I, I never owned a Nitro, and I don't think I'll own a Nitro. Well, I do have one. It's all in boxes. It's a vintage one. Uh, I actually have two of them, um, and I'm not sure what to do with it. I'm thinking I'm just going to sell them off. But uh, my brother had some, and every time I see him with it, he's always tweaking with it. He's always adjusting it. He's always, like, fine-tuning it. It takes him about 10, 15 minutes to get ready, and then he's, he goes. And, uh, but it, I love the sound. The sound is really cool. Yeah, the sound's cool. I had one, and it's just more hassle than it was worth. It was, like, every time I took it out, I spent more time working on it than I actually did running it. Oh, really? Yeah, so it's like, forget this. Sounds good, though. Yeah. And then that's why now a lot of people actually have sound modules in their car. And uh, yeah, it sounds good, but it gets annoying on the trails after a while. If they yeah, have that's, I can mine, I can mine on quick connects. Like I can just pull one lead and disconnect the sound or put okay. it in. Cool. So. It's handy. Not that I crawl with many people anyway. It's me and leave me and my alter ego, you know. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you and see you, Steve. Yeah, we hear yeah. you and we see you. I think them fireworks or whatever was blocking the signal because it kept kicking me off. Really? That's odd. I ate a whole ribeye just about by the time I got <laughs> connected again. Hey, he's hmm. up all gear. Hey, Bull Gear. I'm 
my slash ultimate came with OBAs. What the heck are OBAs? I'm not sure of that acronym. Uh, on that's board that's... audio. Oh, yeah, on yeah. board yeah. audio. Yeah. Yeah. This one nice. came with it too. It actually sounds cool, the one in the slice, though, for those. Yeah, it's yeah. loud. It's really loud. But you can, turn, you can turn it down, too. Yeah, so it's the same as the ES, ESS ones. You can turn the volume up and down on them as much as you want. Like. Now you're making me hungry, Steve. You're worse than Justin. Goodbye. Bye to So which truck are you working on right now? Uh that's my Jan said and just putting the hobby wing um ESC in it. There. Okay. Yeah, them, them hobby wings, them ten eighty hobby wings. Hmm. The programming you can do with them is unbelievable for drag brake, reverse. You can set so many different points in them. It's crazy that okay. Cool. And they're reliable. I've never had an issue with one of them. Right. And on the, underneath it is a, an actual tire from when I used to have one of them um, clawbacks. Yeah. So the spare tire comes in handy as an RC stand. Yeah. Do you have one of those big clawbacks? Yeah, I used to have one of them a long time ago. I actually put a... I put the... The Raptor body for an X Max. The Raptor body for the X Max fits on it as well. Nice. So, yeah, so I put one of them on it. I done a load upgrades, sound cards, lights, everything. I think it was a beast though, like but it's just it's a novelty for a while, but just traveling around with it is a nightmare. Like, exactly. You know? hmm. With the one tens I can throw like three or four of them in the trunk of the car, throw that claw back and that's it. We get nothing else in the trunk of it. So I went, I saw a video today from um, a guy that actually commented on one of my video. So I went to see what he was all about. And uh, here's the link, uh, but I'll show you real quick. So taboo. So uh, this guy does speed runs and he's been working on his Traxxas Slash VXL. And uh, he started posting some videos like four months ago and so on. So that's a, like a progression of what he's been doing. He's been doing it for longer also. But wow. like for for months, he's been VXL, VXL. And then rest in peace. Yeah. Four by four. Like this, uh, it's kind of sad and, and too bad that uh, that actually happened. Let's see if I can show you real quick. So he's coming. He's coming back. Come on. He's moving over and then he just goes right towards the car. And then the whole car like destroys. And then the battery's out and starts smoking. Like there's pieces everywhere. Most of the car is probably still under the car. Man. please like everything was just like a thousand pieces wow all that all that work he put into it too was gone yeah yeah that's too bad but the, it's it's just a sense of, of when you were in it's speed runs uh you put in a lot of work with it and one bad accident it's gone. All the work, all the money you've spent on it. It's yeah. Gone. It's, it's sad. That's it. Like, cause a normal width road, like you don't really have, if you're on a 40 foot road, you norm, you only have like 20 feet. Cause if you're mm -hmm. coming down the center of it, it's actually only 20 feet each way. Like, yeah. And, and at a hundred mile an hour, one of them things that, that 20 feet's gone the blink of an eye. Yeah. Yeah. And, and especially if, if you're looking for other cars, if cars are coming or if something is coming, you get nervous and just one little twitch on that remote control, you lose control or you go in the ditch. One or the other. Yeah. Hey, he's up, Green Frog. 
Hey, Green Frog. Uh, oh, there's Green Frog. I was going to say, I don't see him. None of them, none of them jumping in tonight, though, no? Yeah, no. come on, Kagan, jump in. Must have, must have been something I said last week, or maybe I've been too mean lately, calling people name and telling them to F off and whatever. <laughs> You're Canadian. That doesn't happen. Nah, that's true. But it must be my medication. Yeah. Tank, sorry. He's sorry. I, I'm actually surprised how little I curse when I'm on this chat with you guys. Like, it's not normally the, the culture I grew up in. Like, we use the F word as a full stop in a sentence. Like, yeah. Yeah. You use it a lot, too. Yeah. 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 The biggest shock I had when I came to America was. Like the C word, oh my god, that's like you rip somebody's head off and, and everything. Like you know, like the C oh, yeah. next Tuesday, yeah, yeah. Uh, when I, cause where I grew up in Ireland, we used that to explain. Like I wouldn't say me, Tank, Steve, and all were on a chat last night. I'd say me and them bunch of C's were on the oh, chat, yeah. and that's yeah. how we, that's how we describe things. Like you know, and then come to America, and it was like first time I said it. Man, I thought I was going to start a riot. <laughs> or oh, you're from uh, Belfast, ain't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where. Uh, you ever see? Do you ever watch uh, Sons of Anarchy? They got yeah. a chapter in Belfast. Yeah, they had the Belfast chapter there, the IRA chapter, huh? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's a fun, fun place in the eighties. That's what I was telling somebody the other day. Like the first actual radio-controlled vehicle I seen was like the bomb disposal robot. <laughs> oh yeah, for yeah, the IRA. <laughs> yeah, well, it used to be the it used to be the guys in big suits came walking out of the vehicles, and then all of a sudden one day this like truck pulled, really cool big truck, and the back door flips open. Next minute, this like robot just comes driving out of it. it. Was like, what the hell? This futuristic thing, like you know? Yeah, with tank tracks on it and shit. Hands. Yeah, and <laughs> this big funky arm sticking out the side of it, like you know. Right. RC Mass Master says his feed got cut off. Now he's gonna have to. Uh, he missed a whole bunch of stuff. Well, you don't. You don't really miss it. Just, just go back tomorrow. Just go back and listen to what you missed. What's up, Javier? Hey, Javier. Outdoor, outdoor with Sean. Thanks for popping in. Class two has a max tire size of four point seven five, I believe. Yeah. I think so too. Yeah. There's so many different little, like it, each place has their own little rules on it too. Like. That's correct. Because that's what I was mentioning. It's better to ask, okay, what rules do you go by? Because a lot of people follow the Sorka, but with a twist. So they add their own little things onto it. Yeah. yeah. Cause I don't know if you've been watching any of RC spark stuff there from there at yeah. the rude boys. Tough yeah. Challenge. Yeah. RC Basher Boy, Class 3 uh, is the big 2.2 tires. To tell you the truth, I've seen some 2.2 tires that were actually smaller than 1.9 tires. So it, it doesn't matter. 2.2 is actually the size of the rim. And 1.9 is the size of the rim. And 1.55 is the size of the rim. What, what counts is the total size of the tire. So just because a rim is 2.2 doesn't mean it's a big tire. Just want to say that. That's all. How you doing, guys? How's everybody doing? Hey, Levin Charlie. Doing good. I thought I was going to be alone tonight and just talk to myself again. <laughs> yeah, I was doing some homework. You know, I started doing that online classes. And so. Oh, good for you. Homework. Catch up. Ooh, homework. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Bro, it's been more than 25, 26 years. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> I couldn't imagine doing homework after 25. Oh, bro, I'm just headaches, man. <laughs> and, but now you, you got to deal with the distraction while you're doing the homework is the distraction stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 hard. Yeah, especially with kids. Yeah, all of you. You guys, you guys hear every time I <laughs> join in, sometimes you guys hear the, the, the boys from the other side of the house. So. Yeah. Imagine that. So, 
It's all good. Just getting used to it. That's that's the hardest part. When you then after you're used to it, then it's a lot easier. We'll see. How's everybody doing the chat? Uh, RC Basherboy wants to know his uh, opinion on what class is Honcho SEX10 beyond. Okay. Uh, the Honcho is usually a class two, depending on the tire size it's got. Yeah. Depending on the modification you've done to it. Yes, yes. So, to answer your question, it could be a class two, but it could also be a class three. True With all seeing it, it's hard to say. True Three. Boy's going live while someone else is live in the RC family. Once again, did that shit to uh, someone else the other day. Yeah, yeah. Axel, he was actually on Axel's, he was actually on Axel's chat and then said I'll be back and went and started up his own live chat. Yeah, yeah, that's who it was when we were on Axel's. Yeah. Maybe it's because we don't talk his language. Maybe. I talk his language. I talk. I'm used to that shit, but at the same time, <laughs> Steve, Steve was a Detroit boy. He's used to that. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because people come by and they're like, "How do you know what they're saying? I can't understand what people are saying around here." Yeah, it all depends if they talk too fast. Yeah, that's true for me, anyways. Yeah. Yeah, and where's Axiomatics tonight? I haven't seen him in the chat. Maybe he uh, found a house. Maybe he's moving. Oh, yeah. Maybe. maybe finally he got rid of that one and got another one. I know Buck said that he's meeting with the realtor tomorrow. He's going to get another, a new house. Nice. This bachelor pad, it's going to be. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's a lot of, it's a lot of hassle moving and packing. Hmm. So. Uh, RC Basher Boy says there are the, all these classes. It's so tough to know which category a crawler lands into. No, it's not. Just read the document, download the PDF, and read the document, and you'll know exactly where your truck lands into. I've seen his uh, his honcho, and that's probably the class three because he's got huge 2.2 tires on that thing. Yeah. Well, 4.75, uh, I think, is the maximum you can have on 2.2s. Anything over for 4.75 is class three, yes. So, and it's usually written on the side of your tires what size they are. It wouldn't yeah. matter what class. I mean, I'd be having fun either way. It don't matter. Yeah, that's the best thing. That's that should be the main focus. Have fun. Yeah. Yeah. There's fun. Some people are competitive, and oh, if yeah. they lose something, they're gonna bitch. Yeah, yeah, that's sometimes that's the nature of. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of them that go down competitions. They're there like serious as anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just like when you go on the RC racetrack, uh, dirt or carpet. It's whoever has the most money to put in this car is gonna be the leader. Because they're the one that spend a lot of time on their cars, tuning it and practicing with it and spending lots of money in it. Um, and yeah. they're, they're good. They're, I've seen some of these guys are freaking wicked. The guy that was running, uh, he had a slash and a rustler today. And uh, he asked us, he was good at, on the racetrack, but like he asked us, he's like, can I ask you guys, uh, how, how how much oil do I put in my shocks? So I fill it all the way up? Or he's like, I, I can't remember, but I was surprised he was asking about how much oil to put in shocks when he was flying around that track like he knew what he was doing. Hmm. He was a good driver. He probably drive it, can't maintain it. No. No. 
So uh, Tugga RC is asking, so do you guys think that HPI is going to do a strong, uh, to come back strong? What do you guys think? Yeah, probably. I, I, I think so. Like it's a new, that English company bought them, it's actually out of it now. So it's a new Swedish company that's mm -hmm. just bought them back over. And they said they're going to release a lot of the old products as well. So Good. Uh, HPI is a good name. They've they, they've done a good job with their name, but in the past five years has gone down in product service and availability for products. That's what hurt them. But yes, if they do come back, I think the fans are still there. Some people are still going to buy them their product. As yeah, as it's that, craw that crawler they done, like I know a few people have got it like straight out of the box. That thing is a beast. Yeah. Yeah, HPI Venture. Yeah, the venture, yeah. The only problem is not too many people jumped on board to actually do aftermarket parts for it. Yeah, that's that's one of the killer uh, yeah. some of those those companies, you know, yeah. other than the Traxxas and other main companies, the aftermarket parts they just jump right on them, you know. Yeah. Well, the 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 the, the only thing is is that nobody did the aftermarket is because Nobody was, uh, uh, not enough cars were sold. And, and there was, they're going broke. Yeah. Wasn't a demand. So, yeah. And that's the problem. If they know, or this, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, a saying that it, this is not a good, uh, uh, platform. Good yeah. Or a good platform. Yeah. They're not gonna, those aftermarket parts, they're not gonna take a chance. So, and also the buyers, they're not gonna take a chance. So what happened is they're there I buy this and there's no parts for it, you know, part support. Yeah, it's tough. That's the, that, yeah, that's the thing about axial, like the, the aftermarket parts are insane. Like, oh crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. you could find anything for them. It's crazy. Yeah, because yeah, I was I was searching forever and I actually found a set today and my local hobby shop there, the par hobbies for inner fenders for the SCX ten. Extra, mm -hmm. extra speed I actually made a set they they have them in stock for like 15 bucks or something so for the extra speed for the what now did you say for the inner fenders from the SCX 10 too because that's one thing I hated about it like you just you can see when it goes over a rock or something you can look right inside the rig you know okay okay and that's why that's why you don't really see it in many of my videos at all mm. until well now that I get fenders and the new body on it You'll see a lot more of it probably. Hmm. I thought you were talking about like the beef tubes, but I got extra speed. And they're just like the beef tubes that go inside of the axle housing to uh, strengthen them. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the beefing it up. Yeah, because those are like 15 bucks, 20 bucks. They're cheap too. Yeah. It's good to see people starting to carry extra speed stuff, though. Like, cause a lot of it you had to order from like waste.com or some of them, like to get the extra speed parts. They uh, didn't they make their own crawler? They just made their own crawler, ex the extra speed. Yeah, they did, and it actually looks pretty good, too. Like, it has a yeah. deep body on it. Yeah, yeah, there was a guy here this uh, the last event I did here, he had one. He actually was did it? a D one ten with it. it. Was nice and long. Uh, was it nice in person? Did it look good? Like, yeah, it did look good. Like it was a nice class one truck with small tires, and it looked very good. Mind you, it did not perform too good because it was way too long for my track and some of the challenges. But yeah. uh, it was it was doing okay. How about that SSD? They didn't they did a chassis, right? Yeah, SSD also came out of the truck. That's another nice one. Yeah, I haven't heard nothing like uh, a lot of reviews on it or nothing. Yeah, there's not as many of them, but it is a, an expensive kit because it, it is a bulletproof kit. Oh. It's like the uh, Vanquish, but um, it's it's it, it it will take it will take flight. It just it yeah. came out uh, early this summer, so uh, not a lot of people know about it or want to spend yeah. money for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> your boy, nice and long. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> what was the price on that SSD? Nobody knows. You guys, 
don't remember. You can look it up. I have some I have some SSD parts on my crawlers and I, and I love them, you know. What is the RS4? RS uh, RS4 is a uh, like my unicorn is an RS4. Oh, okay, okay. The uh, on-road car from uh, HPI. That's the one I would have got if damn monster didn't take it off their list. I got all these damn caps. I mean, it seems like all of them aftermarket part companies are starting to come out though, because Boom Racing, they came out with theirs, sort of like a Toyota Hilux type one yeah. as well. Yeah, see, 449, Frank, for that uh, SSD kit. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Which is yeah, actually right. not bad, because that's... That's, that's not like, bad for... Yeah, because yeah. that's not much more than a TRX4 kit. Yeah, like, but does it have, you see, no wheels, no tires, no electronics. And I wonder if the the parts, are they mainly plastic or, or, or metal? Oh, uh, there are a lot of metal in there. Like, yeah. yeah, I have it. I'm showing it off here. Okay. Hopefully I am. Uh, so it's called the uh, Pro Scale Chassis. Okay. Scale King. So, like even the knuckles, you can get some brass weight from the knuckles. There's a lot of cool upgrades for it, or cool stuff. But if I go to the ch trail chassis kit, they have the 3D engine. Come on. This is cool that the uh, um, Zoom actually puts a small little thumbnails of our face up there in the corner. <laughs> So we got big pictures. Oh, I guess they're not bad. So you get the full transmission, the motor up front, so it looks a heck of a lot more scale. Yeah, and scale. Engine. I think the tray is plastic, but everything else is metal. Uh, I think the bumper mount is actually metal. I don't think the axles are metal. I think they're 3D printed, but I could be wrong. I got to look at the specs. But it's a nice kit. Yeah, it looks like. At least they run the frame right out as well. Like they didn't cut the frame back short. Yeah. Like the, Gen, the new Gen 8, they cut the frame way back. Short, they could have just run it out instead of the plastic. Mm -hmm. Cool, a machine aluminum knuckles, aluminum C hubs, okay. scale, design, scale axle design. Hardened um, steel lockers with certain bolts. Sorry, go ahead. No, I'll say maybe because it's uh, 450, is it? It's tough because maybe I'd just rather save 200 more dollars and, and get the the vanquished one, you know? Yes, that's true. And yeah. you have, especially when you have uh, all the rigs, you know, because you could just get a receiver, um, a, you know, a receiver and, and then get the electronics, you know, have, you don't need a transmitter. So you're going to save a lot of money, especially with all those upgrades they already have on it, man. Well, just the, the, the axle on the Vanquish, the axle oh, yeah. are super nice. And, and that's like what, uh, $400? Yeah. In axle, just, just, just on that? Just for the axle. Yeah. yeah. It looks nice though. Yeah, it does. It's weird. The battery yep. tray is in a weird position though. And the rear, if I see, right? I don't know. You, yeah. yeah well, the, uh, the, the, the battery tray is almost the same place as my TF2. Okay. It's right behind the transfer case. I just guess it depends what you want to do. If you want to do like a, a what you call scale truck. Yep. 
Well, if you want to scale a truck, you need a very small battery because your interior is actually going to come uh, down where that battery tray is. Yeah. And most trail truck people, they run a very small battery, like a 1200 milliamp. Yeah. And that's what they run. And it's more than sufficient. All right. And this bad boy today, big old 5100 brick. <laughs> <laughs> Lasted all day. Did you run out of power? No, no. We broke both the truck. We broke both the trucks we were running before it could run out of power. Wow! Which truck were you running? Uh, TRX four and uh, Axio bomber. Okay. Hey Steve, a comp. I, I don't know if I told you a company contact me. Uh, it's a new uh, company, Power Something. I don't know if you know about them. You heard about them? It's Not for uh, lipo batteries. Not sure. Okay. I thought you sent it to me. So uh, there's a new company uh, that's going to start, and they're still waiting for approval on Amazon. They say it was going to be this week. Uh, so as soon as I know something, I'm going to send it to you guys, you know. Yeah. I would have sent you another uh, company, but they were on that bullshit where they wanted you to pay for it first and yeah. then fund you yeah. after the review. So I was like, nah. That's not how we do business. And they're like, well, if you ever want to do business like that, contact me back. Yeah, yeah. Probably won't. They, I think they... <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Javier. No, I think they, they those companies, that they, they want us to, to do reviews, right? If if you, you know, you, you have to do so, or your research, you know, look our channels. If you something fishy, yeah, I will probably ask, yeah, pay me first. Then, but if you see like it's a family-oriented channel and and all this stuff is going on, looks positive, man. It's it's a different story, you know. I don't know. Uh, RC Recor Re Recreation is asking, how's the Herbie build going? It's uh, ninety-nine point nine percent complete. It's right there. Showed it off yesterday and the day before on a bunch of other channels. So. Uh, I got to do a couple little things and uh, I'll be doing a, a final video with it. So, John uh, says that I don't want if I ghosted him, but he probably knew you're in Canada. They don't send uh, batteries to Canada because I try. I hooked them up with Frank, but Frank said yeah. I couldn't get them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, John, uh, the guy from the battery, I did talk to him and uh, he was ready to send me some. I'm sure that I uh, send me your address and I send him the address and then he goes, Oh, Canada, we can't do Canada right now. So, um, and he says, unless you go on the, uh, amazon.com site and buy the batteries. But when you go there, by the time you pay the brokerage fee, the tax, and especially the brokerage fee, it was stupid. It came up with two NIM batteries. It was costing me close to $60 Canadian. Wow. Wow. And those batteries are like 20 some odd dollars. Like it, it yes. was like three times the cost. It was stupid. Yes. 28, 29. I got those. I have to do the review for, for, for Jack Wool. Yeah, they're 20 something dollars. For what? That's crazy. But that, he, that one five. Yeah, that one five. Uh, he said he is opening up a uh, Canadian, um, uh, Canadian uh, Amazon. So hopefully yeah. he's going to have that soon. Awesome. But I do have to message him once in a while just to keep him keep my name in his mind so yeah awesome awesome hey congrats gabriel i got that too uh finally i got was approved today for that uh fan good stuff all I they're just, doing <clears throat> they're going to all our videos and looking yeah. at who's commenting and now they're hitting all everybody up that comments in the That's same cool. video yeah i already put my first order today uh I was back and forth with that lady. I forgot her name. Um, like three days. Rachel? Do you talk to Rachel? Yeah, Rachel. Rachel. Yeah, Rachel. Yeah. And and I always ask her. Oh, okay, so what's what's my balance? You know, what's the limit I have to order? He said, "Let's wait until approval." No, no. Before she didn't answer me. She always like, "Okay, let's do this and blah blah blah." So at the end, he said, "Okay, you were approved. You send me, uh, you know." A link or what you want 
but she never gave me the the, the amount, right? So I just I just picked that Hummer. <laughs> I just threw it out there. <laughs> I say, hey, what happens? I say, no, 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 that's too. <laughs> Hey, you know, ne you never answer me back. So <laughs> usually they'll send you a list to pick yeah. out them. Yeah. And then, like this time, she uh, <laughs> said, "These are our our, our newest products. These two yeah. links, but look around and send me the link to what you want to yes. review." Yes, that's what they did. That she came back and she gave me, you know, between fifty and a hundred dollars. That's that's your rent, and we work from there. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so, John from Net Cruiser, I did send you a link on Messenger. So look it up. I did send you a link to join in. Yeah, uh, ba uh, the Banggood per person. She just sent me an email saying, "Could you? Would you do review review it?" I said, "Sure." And then yeah. uh, it started like that. And right after, send me a link. Like not nothing. Okay, you've been approved mm -hmm. or anything. Like, it's just like, do you want to? Yes. Here's the link, pick, and then I pick, and then they send it to uh, me. So it oh, yeah. a bit easier. Yeah, mine, mine was different. I had to wait for between three to five days, but it was less than. It was like in two mm -hmm. days to wait for the approval. Yeah, she sends the application in, yeah. and then they approve it or not. Yeah. yeah. Hey, John, oh, how really? you doing, man? Hey, good. Just getting my window set up for trying to set up Zoom and chat and everything. Okay. <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah, the quality of Zoom is a heck of a lot better for the video. That's for sure, especially yeah. for that has low bandwidth. Yeah, I'm curious to see. That's also why I wanted to jump in and try. Um, it's using my in laptop camera, though. I got to try and figure out how to switch it to the other camera. Yeah, on the bottom left, there's a little camera logo. Switch, click on the arrow going up, and then you can pick which camera you want to use. Okay, I see it. There, there we go. go. John, did your kit come in yet? Huh. No, I don't even think it shipped yet. Well, actually, oh. it did ship. It did ship. It shipped the same day, so it's on its way. What, what did you What did you order, John? Uh, same thing Steve -O did. Later, I. Um, what's that? Which one did you order, John? It's a Tamiya kit. Oh, nice. <laughs> really cool. For build off ten, yeah. That Toyota Gazoo racing. Oh man. The gazoo that looks, car. It looks killer, bro. That 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 body looks killer, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's that's, cool. that's the one I was wondering on getting also. Like I I, I got the cash in, in bank and all that and, and there do I get it? Don't uh, and my wife just <laughs> shit, I had too many more season and there do I do I get it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I decided I I still told myself a long time ago I wanted to get it and uh yeah, anyway. It's a good time. It is. It is a nice car, and it's based on the F1. So the the way the suspension is and all that, it's 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 kind of a cool little. Yeah, system. it is. It's based on an F1 chassis. I think it's extended or something. There's something different about the GT version that makes yeah. it slightly different. But um, it comes with. It says it comes with bearings in the kit. So I'm happy about that. Um, I looked at what other upgrades there are for it. There's there's like a discontinued aluminum uh, motor mount and some other like aluminum hubs and some other to me a fancy blue stuff but not a whole lot um i didn't order any of that yet but i might <laughs> that thing's a direct drive i think yes, yeah it is. yeah See, yeah it's got carbon fiber and stuff carbon fiber plates and stuff in it i wonder if that's an inaccurate description though because i i read that too it said carbon fiber upper deck but then you read somewhere else and it says fiber reinforced plastic so i don't i i would assume for the price we paid we're getting the plastic fiber well it, if you did you see the unboxing um what's his name did uh an unboxing of it and it had carbon fiber chassis uh plates in it oh that's awesome no i didn't see that um I'm trying to think of the. It's the guy right. you won stuff from at Christmas, I believe. Oh yes. Um, yeah. Uh, oh. The name's. I'm blanking on the name. Yeah, but you know who I'm talking about. Did that giveaway, and I think you yeah. won something. Yeah, he does that. Eat, sleep, or he does. 
Eat Sleep RC is a website, but then his other company is something else. Oh, Competition X. Yeah, yeah, Competition X. I believe that was his video that he show he unboxes it. All right, cool. I I like to be surprised. I'll just wait till it comes. <laughs> you don't have any M chassis, right? You don't I, have any Tamiya M? No. Okay. I I really like that beetle you're building. You, you, you need to get an M chassis. They're, they're not expensive, and they're fun to race. They used to have a class for racing at, on really carpet, like uh, yeah. but they don't have any more. But, like, it was a fun class. My, I got the M05. That's that front-wheel drive. Yeah, M05. M04 was rear-wheel drive. M06 is rear-wheel drive. Well, if that new Volkswagen bus that's on the M05 chassis shows up somewhere, I would likely go home with it. Yeah, it's M06, yeah. Yeah. But I'm sure, like you mentioned, and I saw it too, it seems to be sitting high. Yeah, and, it doesn't look as nice as the bug does. Yeah, and, and I think you can actually bring it down because the wheels are tucked in a lot. So I, I, I think it should be easy enough to bring in. Yeah, on Instagram, I saw someone had built one. And his, I, I wrote the comment, yours looks better than the Tamiya press shots do. Because, yeah, he had lowered the body a bit and he did a different color and it looked, it looked gorgeous. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so that I'm might be next. I'm happy how my paint job turned out on on my uh, Volkswagen Bug <coughs> because I went with a pearl white instead of a white, so it's kind of an off white. It's not a, a, a white white, and I think yeah. it turned out really good. I like it. Furby is an off white. He's not a bright white. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. What is it called? Eggshell white, or they're all different types of whites. Yeah, but Tamiya does not have a off-white spray can. Like you have different color of white, but no off-white. So you bought a pearl. A Tamiya yeah, pearl? So I got the pearl because I, I was holding the pearl. I don't think I have a white here. Oh yeah, I do. Like when you're holding the can of pearl and the can of white, you can really tell the difference between the two when in real life. So one is really white, but the other one is kind of a little darker. So yep. when I saw that in the store, I go, oh, perfect. I'm going to get the pearl. So, yeah, nice. Have you put out the, the final video for that yet? No, uh, I'm still going through the process of the build. And uh, because I'm talking through the build, like I'm, I'm explaining some stuff, especially on the manual and more in depth of how to read the manual and how to, part, to put the parts together. Okay. And then uh, instead of showing people me screwing the screws, I just skip it here. It's done. This is what it looks. Here's the parts. And then I, I cut and I go here. It's done. So it's, it's anybody can follow a manual. It's just I'm following and, and saying points about the manual. So that be careful of this, be careful of that or whatever. Yeah, that's good. I like that when you point out the tricky parts or yeah. something that might be hard to understand. That's good. Yeah. But you probably did not see the bug, so I'll show you. Hold on. Let me get it. What was that on your Tuesday stream you showed it? Yeah. And I showed it on Jack's stream, and I showed it on uh, steve I think, or whoever was. But uh, here's the love bug. Do, do, do. Nice, man. Oh, it looks so good. It's I, awesome, man. I got myself. Hold on. Uh, spotlight video here we go so yeah it does look very good and uh yeah you even you get more uh more details with the bug as as well versus the oh, yeah, like the bumper the chrome bumper the way it is and all that i still have to put the herbie yeah. plate on i do have the herbie plate the right number and i did uh th these come pre-drilled so you can tell right here where the hole is it's not shiny I actually blocked the holes Build them. using magnets. No. So up front here also is the same thing. So you can barely see it on video, but uh, it looks. How did you match, well, you'll probably have you'll probably have a video how you match the paint. Yeah, well, uh, I did. I am going to be doing uh, the video because I haven't filmed the paint video or the final look of it. But mm -hmm. I use uh, what's called the Bondix pen. Yes. So that's like a liquid liquid plastic. And when you put UV light onto it, it becomes hard, hard, hard. Like it's yeah. like soldering with plastic. It's really cool. And that's what I used for the holes. Chapter nine. <clears throat> Chapter nine. Grown ass man coming in and trolling like a little like a little kid. 
Okay. We don't need you here, you little bitch. <laughs> no, no. Be nice with the comments. Hey, he's saying grown ass men playing with toys. He's a grown ass man trolling on. Is is, is he calling yeah. my RC's toys? Is he calling my RC's toys? Yeah, <laughs> one of these RC's costs more than your life, buddy. Yeah. It's, it gets expensive, yes. So, yeah, it, I'm happy how it turned out, and I can't wait to actually try it on the road. And I want to try to do a. Um, a nice racing video, just like the Herbie the Love Bug racing. Yep. Um, so uh, I'm going to need some driver. So I'll probably call you up and tell you, hey, come on, let's go uh, help me film the, help me film this. So uh, there's a couple things I want to do and tricks and things like that. So we're, we're going to have fun. I want to, I want to use my uh, uh, a couple vintage car I got here. So it's going to match with the Herbie. Mm -hmm. so, should be interesting. What are you working on, Sean? Is that a oh, hobby that's wing? That, yeah, that's a Gen 7 Pro. I just put in the hobby wing, the 1080. Oh, Maybe man. I, lo I love that ESC, man. Yeah, I have them in a lot of my crawlers. Like I've never had an issue with one of them. Like, it's it's crazy. It's crazy how I, I I was very impressed, especially with with that prize. Oh my god! That's the one I. That's the one I have in the Winnebago. And the Winnebago, oh man, it's awesome. I was really surprised, and I like that combo with the uh, Homs hobby. It was mm -hmm. awesome, man. Yeah, that's it. it's good. Like because the, it, the amount of programming you can do in it for a forty dollar. Oh my god! Right, yes. You know? So easy, so easy. You cannot miss that, man. If you if you mess that up, it's oh my, I don't know. Yeah. So easy to do. Uh, BSRC is saying that he's going to help me film, but I do the driving. That's <laughs> <laughs> this guy still here, coming back. Did I hurt? He said, "Did I hit a nerve, little guy?" I'll show you, <laughs> you guy. <laughs> <laughs> You don't like, dude. It's chapter nine is chapter eleven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You always get these people. Did anybody go check his website? Does he have any videos up? I was about no. to do that, but I can't. Probably not. Like you know. Yeah. Let me see. He's just miserable. He just goes around on any type of live stream so he can get any type of human contact because he is a nobody that should yeah. go kill himself. Yeah. He's still living in his mother's basement somewhere, you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, he got a bunch of Islamic stuff, Muslim leaders. Guy, you don't you don't wanna you I mean, you don't wanna piss off a veteran guy. <laughs> Stop, stop with that craziness, guy. <laughs> oh, that's his channel. Yeah, it has a bunch of or something. Islamic countries needs to be united, blah, blah, blah. I don't got nothing about the religion. It's just the streamers, you know? Mm -hmm. It's he's a, he's a member of ICE. We need to take yeah. him out. Well, you, you're in the wrong place, guy. <laughs> That's it. Maybe, we're, not, maybe, we're not all terrorists, you know. They're playing with my toys. Maybe if he played with toys, he would be more chill. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Is that yeah. armor still broke? What's going on? I thought armor were indestructible. <laughs> <laughs> it is still broken, but I just got my new. Uh, last time I had broke the slipper the little screw and i priced out the parts to fix it and it was cheaper just to get a whole new one from jenny's so i just oh. got the mail today this is the 4s the metal like totally brand new for less oh, okay. than it would cost me to buy two parts to repair one <laughs> mm. right so how much did that one cost and what's the part for what's what's it called from which company it's jenny's rc they cut they part out uh new armas and some other stuff too, but mostly Armas. Uh, so Jenny, Jenny's RC.com and you can get pretty much any part that's like removed from a brand new kit. 
Um, so this is the full Arma 4S slipper assembly. Uh, okay, okay, okay. For all the pads and everything. And it was 30 bucks. Um, wow. Canadian. Nice. Because um, I needed to buy this. Whoop, seems like this image is closer on Zoom. Um, I needed to buy the slipper pad assembly, which is $20 for that. And the little teeny tiny screw that goes through the middle, which I think is the worst design of this slipper is mm -hmm. that little screw is what holds it all together. And it's yes. If you tie it, it happened to me, man. When I got my uh, uh, Typhoon 3S, I tied it to two. Yeah, you tie it to it snaps. And it snapped. And the thing is, yeah. I couldn't. I had to buy another one because it stopped functioning. So it was loose. Yeah. Oh my god, it was a mess. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what they call their slipper repair kit, and they charge. I don't know, it's twenty dollars Canadian just for that screw. Wow, <laughs> wow. And so and so they have the same system they have on the three S and the four S. Yeah, I'm not too wow. impressed with that. So the slipper system might be the Achilles heel of this truck. Yeah, yeah. So Kevin oh, is asking, I know you all covered this once before, but what is a good camera to use if I want to, don't want to use my phone at a 250 to 350 range? For for shooting action? I know, where's Jack tonight? Yeah, for shooting. It depends on what kind of quality you want. I If you just want to like run and gun, probably one of a GoPro that's in that price range, a lower end GoPro. Or if you want good quality, then any kind of higher end point and shoot to entry level interchangeable lens camera will get you excellent quality. I got that uh, GoPro. I got a GoPro Hero 7 Black now, finally. Oh, oh nice. 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 Heck yeah, that's going to look awesome. <laughs> uh, I, I find you two, just. Uh, it was uh, two. two 79 for a refurbished one. Yeah, nice, bro. Nice for a Hero 7. Yeah. yeah. I've used the 5 and the 7 back to back, and not only is the stabilization way better on the 7, the colors and contrast is way better on yeah. the I noticed that today, too, because I took <clears throat> just the 7 with me, and yesterday I was using the 5 and the 7, and I could tell the color difference. And Yeah. Okay. I just didn't know if I had the settings wrong on one and the other one was better, but I could tell a big difference. Yeah. I mean, for in that, your uh, GoPro Hero 7 on a discount or a refurbished one is damn close to that 250 in that guy's price range. And, and that would be the camera that you can dial it down to make it look like a normal camera if you crop it in and turn it in linear mode, or you can go full wide and you can get like the rich duper bash, like crazy angles and stuff like it's very versatile. I do like it for that. Cool. I, I, I like the fact that you can actually go in and at uh, Walmart or whatever. I know you... that it has a Zoom feature. I, I was talking. How rude. <laughs> I was talking. It's, it was my internet. I'm sorry. It's saying my internet. It's jumping. I didn't hear you talk. Oh, it was dang. my internet. Jeez. Wait, that's why I use the rear's hand. <laughs> Yeah, we should do the raise hand to ask a question. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it has that hand thing, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, you can go at Walmart or any other photo place and get a, a good point and shoot for that price range, and that's actually waterproof. Uh, and as long as you have 60 frames a second, you can get some pretty good videos and stay at 1080p. You don't need to go at 4K, but it all depends if you want to go at 4K. But... Uh, you can find some pretty nice point and shoots at that price point, that's for sure. But does the 4K not take a lot longer to upload, though? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the problem with that. Yeah. Just think about a 4K is four it's times the size of a 1080. Uh, oh, you're cutting out bad now. Yeah. That's how it was for you. I've been getting the same thing, cutting out like that. That's how I didn't yeah. like talking. And, and, I think, and I think we lost John. Yeah, we might have lost him now. Oh, he's, yeah, he's back. back. Yeah, so that, that's the problem with doing 4K, just the length of time. It takes to upload them, like, you know? Yeah. 
But when you shoot in 4K, it's nice because when you have a good editor, you can actually zoom in four times into that video and then you're actually in 1080p. So that's kind of neat what you can do with it. You can actually do some pan and zoom and it makes it look like you, you had a camera person uh, yeah. operating yeah. the camera, but you don't. You don't. So yeah, that's a good a trick. trick. If you record in a higher resolution than you post, you can zoom in. Yeah. The, I've seen the GoPro 7 has zoom, like uh, right before you start shooting, you can actually zoom in. But I, I don't know if it makes it not as clear when you zoom yeah, in. I don't think it would be as good that way. And then you can't zoom out again after you start recording. So I just do it in edit. Yeah. I say I, I only add it off my phone, so I can't be that fancy. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> well, it's because if you use that Ken Burns and it, it has the start box and the end box, yeah. that's where you can zoom it in and that, and it looks like you're following and the cameraman zooming back, and you know it automatically does it for you, basically. Yeah, yeah you got it. That's a great trick. Save up and buy a Canon 5D Mark 15. <laughs> Sony just put out a RX100 Mark 7 today. It's $1,200. Oh, <laughs> you my are. God. That's a, that's a little point and shoot, but it's like the best quality point and shoot you can get. But it also has some annoying things they did to it that, that make it not as good as even one that was came out two years ago. Do you guys see um, True Boys RC, the uh, gimbal that he has? Oh, my God. That's like a movie uh, set. It's yeah. a $1,000 gimbal. It's yeah. got like two handles on it. Yeah, it like... yeah it's awesome. a big camera on it. I just it got was awesome. this week, but it's it's a single handle, boy. <laughs> nice. Cool. Yeah, I have, an, I have an Osmo. I never use it. Like, I have a DJI, too. I never use it. So I'm normally both hands are occupied driving my rigs. So, hey John, if ever they're looking for other channel to to do some reviews, send them my way. Eh? <laughs> sure. that, that was a, for a review. That's how you got that. Yeah, they originally wanted to send me a, uh, a cell phone gimbal, and I said, "Well, I've already done a bunch of those. How about you send me this big boy?" And they said, "Okay." <laughs> so that worked out. <laughs> and uh, what size of camera can you put on that? Uh, you can go up a little bit bigger than this. You can put 800 grams on it, which I think is like 1.3 pounds or something. Okay. I don't know how much this camera weighs. but Yeah. It all, it all depends on the lens. Like you can put a good DSR, DSLR on there, but it all depends on the lens you put on it because yeah. some lens are heavier. <laughs> yes, I see said too bad he doesn't know how to use it. Oh, it's powered off, but yeah. <laughs> I am learning how to use it, yeah, because it was all came in Chinese. I got the non-English version. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. But I figured yeah, cool. it out mostly. Turn it on. Yeah, it's on now. Anyway. Sweet. Yeah, that, that's the only problem with the Osmo. Like, when you put the Go, it comes, uh, you get the GoPro holder for it as well, but then you just hear the motors just constantly run them when you put the GoPro on it. Kevin Gitt says they have a GoPro reconditioned six for $199. Wow. I'd say if uh, you can find a seven for a couple bucks more, that has that super, you know, stabilization. Yeah. Where, where you got that from, Stable? Uh, Amazon? Amazon. Yeah. yeah. I think it was Amazon or eBay. Yeah, and I bought that, the DJI Osmo Action, and they still haven't put out a microphone input for it, and it doesn't have as good of audio as the uh, GoPro does, and it doesn't have a GPS, and it doesn't have a wide field of view, and there's a bunch of things that I don't like about that Osmo. Um, so I might, I might end up selling it. We'll see. Hmm. Yeah, especially if you care about the audio, that's very important. Yeah. yeah, the GoPro has better sound for sure. My GoPro 5, the sound is good when I'm recording, but today was the first time I used the 7, and 
the audio was like totally muffled and then it would come in clear and then it was totally muffled. So I don't know if I have to, I have to set that one up for something different because there's different options in the audio, like wind noise or something like that. Yeah, there's uh, it switches out of stereo mode if it senses a lot of wind. So if it was windy out, it was probably doing that. Um, there is a there is a setting for for the mics. I just set it on full auto, full auto high processing. Okay. Now, how was that uh, new DJI uh, action camera that you, you you used compared to the GoPro Seven? Do you recommend that one instead? The other small little action cam you bought. Well, that's what I was saying. I, I don't. Not when they're in so similar a price. The GoPro has way more features and better sound. Yeah, because they are close to the same price, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's good, but if it's the same price, the GoPro can do way more. Yeah. Yeah, because GoPro's been in that market way longer. Like you, you think DJI, though, with them having the cameras on the drones and everything, they would have had it nailed. Hmm. They did do very well on the stabilization. Like the the smooth shots is on par with GoPro, but there's just some things like the the microphones that are built into it, and um, and it doesn't have any telemetry stuff built in. So if you want to use it, like if you want to put it on an RC and then go run down the road on a GoPro, you can get the speed, the GPS, the G forces. You can put that in your video. It it as telemetry in your foot, uh, and the DJI doesn't have any of that. That's cool. Yeah, but it's only the new Hero Seven that has that, though, isn't it? No, up to five, I think. Five and up. Yeah. Up five and up has that, yeah. Yep. That's how much I know, but I I use a five forever. Didn't even realize that was in it. But for you to get the telemetry, GPS on. For you to get the telemetry, you have to suck it out of the GoPro. You can't take it off the card. Yeah, you have to use their app to like turn it on in, yeah. the, in the video that's why i haven't done it because it, it does take a few more steps yeah government tracking <laughs> well like the new one when i turned it on uh of course it's a brand new so it has the gopro thing and then you have to go through the setup and for gps it said do you want gps on or uh, skip and i skipped it because i didn't have like a phone or an ipad on so you're saying even if I turn that on, yes, it would not do the GPS in that unless I had it hooked up to the app, like through the phone or an iPad? No. To, to get it to record onto your footage, you have to have, you just turn GPS on and then it will be in your file. But in order to see it, you have to then like use their app to be able to pull that graphic into your footage. Okay. So, so you can get the data as long as GPS is on. Okay. GPS on, Steve. It was just another way of Big Brother tracking you. I know, I know. That's why I skipped it the first time. It's also, it's also a good way to have it chew through your battery twice as fast. I have noticed that by turning that off, you get a lot better runtime out of your GoPro. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> hey, Earl RC, how are you doing? Get in here. I sent you an invite. Anthony, what's going on? Jerry. Jerry, yeah. Jerry VRC is here. Yeah, the Samsung S7 is a good camera. For years, I've used the Samsung 3. I went to Samsung uh, 6, and now I'm using the Samsung 8, 8S. So, pretty good little camera. 8S? Yeah. It's an 8S. Yeah, they do. Uh, I like that one. I have the S9. It's, the camera's impressive. Yeah, yeah your video quality is good on your phone, frankly. Good. Yeah, that's the other thing. I mean, if you're willing to use your phone more, the like the top-end phones, even from a year or two ago, are, well, better quality than a GoPro, but more fragile. Yeah. Well, the 8S and uh, 9S are actually waterproof, which is nice. But yeah, if you do drop them or hit a rock or whatever, you got more chance of damaging them. Yeah, because the picture quality between when I use my iPhone to film something and I use my GoPro, 
picture quality is crazy different. Yeah. Yeah, Drury VRC purchased a tank, so he's going to be getting that soon. That's going to be kind of cool. That'll be cool. Well, that's one thing with Banggood I noticed that they have. They have a lot of RCs, and that's what I want to get. I want to get a, an RC tank, which is a close to the same price. Well, it's about 100 and whatever dollars, so I'll try to get that. Uh, I want to try to get some video gimbals. I want to try to get um, uh, some quads. Uh some toys for me and my son to play with. That's all. Not just RC cars, but I want to do other stuff RC related, like camera gimbals or even cameras to actually test a camera that they have because they sell cameras. Right. He's going Christmas shopping. Go yeah. Milk the system. Get that right. get that Christmas list going. <laughs> get the Christmas list going. And plus it's telling them that uh, it's um it's being used in different ways, so it's cool. Yeah, you might have better luck with to start with Gearbest than Banggood because they used to have like requirements of for Banggood. I know we used to say that they wanted people with ten thousand subscribers, but they must have changed that because you you just got something, didn't you, Steve-O, from Banggood? Yeah, I got a couple things now. Yeah. Uh -huh. And and I, and I got it too, and I got seven what seven thirty seven hundred thirty. Oh, that's awesome, guys! Yeah, yeah. and the Bang Goods did contact me, and they just sent me a truck. I'm actually doing going to do film the review with it this weekend with my son. Awesome! And you got an army truck, the Jeep. With them, that's all you need. You get that one foot in the door, and then you can keep trying to talk to that rep. Yeah, yeah. Gearbest, they did contact me, but then they ghosted me. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I might have asked for things that were worth too much in my last. <laughs> well, they 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 actually gave me a choice of three different things. Is that which one do you want to review? And I told them, okay, this one. And then I never heard back from them. The last email I got was a pick something on the site. Let us know what you'd like to review. So I was like, well, if you're going to leave it open like that, I'm going to pick something good. So I asked for the DHK Zombie Eight E. Um, that's like a three hundred dollar RC. Well, but. Anyway, that email just went out this week. We'll see if they reply. <laughs> yeah. So, talking about gimbals, have any of you tried that, like the Evo SS or anything? Have you tried I got the, the iSteady Pro is what I have in my gimbal by Hohem. Yeah the, yeah, the Evo one is just sort of like one that you can attach to things. Like you can attach it to your controller, you can attach it to, it doesn't oh. have to be a tail, like it's for GoPro or for phones? No, it's for GoPro. Like okay. That. Yeah, this one right here is for the GoPro. And then it's got this you want the that you can screw and screw it. It's got a hole right here where I screw in the bottom of the selfie stick and then I pull it down. And then the gimbal's on the bottom of the selfie stick. Yeah, that one's sort of like my Osmo too. But that, that that Evo SS looks interesting. I just was wondering if any has tried it or anything. Like uh, Tony from CCXRC, I believe, did a review on it. I must go back and check and take a look at it. So. I think that's the one he did, Evo. Yeah, because I just need something for the back of my Spectrum controller. Because when I'm driving the two rigs at the same time. It's hard to film them without the camera, like jumping, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Anthony Benson says he's got a whole bunch of GI Joe tanks with remote from the seventies and eighties. Cool. Huh. Uh -huh. Kevin Gibbs, I'm a newbie, only one RC. <laughs> That's how it starts, man. That's how it starts. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You're gonna grow quick, bro. <laughs> we need, we need to get one of them tanks like RC Sparks had for his yeah, the big one. thing or something. Yeah, that the big one. Yeah, that is insane. Mm -hmm. I, was doing, I, I noticed that Banggood also has um, ta uh, tank parts, like a toy tank you can build or kits, robots, and things like that. And there's actually a rear track of a tank, just a track. And I'd love to get that and put it on a build and put 
two front wheels and have an army truck with, with tank wheels at the back. So that's something else I'm going to try, but it probably won't be till next year, but I'll try. That new axial six by six, take the back wheels off and put a tank track on. Yeah. yeah. That's actually an idea. Because there actually is some German trucks like that that have the tracks on the back. Yeah, half track would be nice, that's for sure. Yeah. Speaking of tracks, have you heard from Yannick if he likes his tracks, Traxxas? Yeah, he, he brought it here at the event, and uh, he had it out and tried it a little bit. And How did he do? To, he seems to like it. But it's probably going to be better in the winter, like in the winter and then mud, in a mud pile or something. Um uh, but like just on the trail or on the rocks, they're not that good. No, I wouldn't think so. Mm. Bye, sir. Bio said he's an amateur with 50 RCs. <laughs> 50? Yeah. Good. Good. Okay. A lot. A lot of maintenance. <laughs> yeah, but most of his RCs are in storage. The shelf queens. Yep. Next big purchase will be a UDR. Cool. John's got a UDR. I got a UDR. Yep. It just they just seem like a pain in the ass to put the batteries in and out. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's the biggest issue. Yeah. I, I like it. I am going to keep that truck, but yeah, the battery compartment is a pain in the ass, and and working on it is a pain in the ass. Oh, yeah. But if you, I don't know, I can see how some people would hate how it drives and other people would love how it drives. I, I like the challenge of it because you really have to feed in the steering softly or it'll traction roll on you, but then you can get some great, some great shots and it feels awesome. Just so plush, right? Yeah. I know there are two different trucks, but which one do you like bashing more, the X-Max or the UDR? For bashing, the X-Max. X-Max. Oh. Yeah. Right. Good night, Scottzilla. Later, Scott, bro. Later, Scott. Later, bro. But, but to, for me, the probably the best like balance between driving, like a nice driving feel, and also really good at bashing is the Creighton. I I do think that that's excellent. Yeah. Because the Creighton is so low to the ground and it handles like, well, a one eight buggy because that's what it is, and it's it just, it's just a nice feeling driving it. Yeah, Bo Gear was just asking about the Unimog six by six. If you go back and watch the start of this Bo Gear, it was about ten minutes of it. Yeah, the first ten minutes of it, we did talk about the uh, uh, six by six Unimog. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. and I do have it here. I can show it real quick again. Axial does have it on their site, and uh, there's a bunch of there's one video out on YouTube from Axial. So, uh, here's on the, the Axial website. Excited about this? <laughs> the what is, it, is anyone ordering one? Is anyone excited about this? Yes, yeah, like there's yeah. actually um, uh, buy it, break it, fix it, purchased one. Oh, nice. Yeah, he did. He did today. <laughs> so four ninety nine. Yeah. I think it could be a really good platform. Like, oh, it's different body, you know. How much is the normal one? What do you mean, normal one? The the, the, the G ten, the just the short wheelbase. Oh, the short wheelbase UDR. I don't know. I think it's close to the same price. I think. Okay. We'll see. Could you put I a knife? Put a nice military body on that or something, you know? Yeah. Some... So on YouTube, they do have a uh, video of it, but I find it cheap, cheaply made video. Um, it does have a military cab, which is the four-door version of the uh, um, Unimog. Again, the front grille I don't like too much, but a lot of people don't like it either. I like the fact that they have a rear cage that's hinged, but looking how it's built, I don't think it's going to be that strong. Military, military spec wheel I like. Oh, just the body lifts up. 
Yeah, the yeah. body lifts up the back. That's right, hey. you weren't here in the beginning. You. Yeah. The Unimark 10 is 299. 299? Okay. Yes. For the, for the kit. Is this a kit at 450? Is it a kit? No, that's ready to run. Okay. And uh, it's got the same shocks and it's got the Spectrum STX2 transmitter for <laughs> all you lovers oh. out there. Mm. <laughs> so, I guess that yeah, I guess they look wow. at it in the top row and don't fix it. So yep. they look up, you know. Not, not enough people complained yet. Yeah. I <laughs> I don't I use I use all flight receivers in my rigs, so all the wireless flight receivers. Okay. I use them because then you don't have to worry about the wire for the receiver or anything like Spectrum make good four and six channel ones, flight receivers. Hmm. Uh, I want to do what uh, RC Spark did and uh, Aaron, what he did with his flight receivers. He got two of them and driving two trucks at the same time with a stick radio. Yeah, well, that's what I do. Most of my videos, like the, the one you put up the other day with the Bronco and the Defender, that was yeah. me, dri that was me yeah. driving both of them off stick shift. As well. Yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. Uh, I'd, I'd love to do that and do a special event here is here's my two trucks and do exactly what, what Aaron did is put a magnet on each truck with a rope and you can't pull the rope apart. So you got to stay close enough with both trucks and go through a course and make sure that rope stays tied to both. Yeah, trucks. That, that's it. The hardest part of it is remembering which truck is on which stick. Most of the yeah. time, that's the hardest part of it. You know? That's cool. That, that's why I say most. That, that's why I said most of the time I go crawling on my alter ego. You know, my right hand's driving one truck, my left hand's driving the other. <laughs> that's pretty advanced. And filming at the same time, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. It's good though. At least I can't fall out with whoever I'm crawling with. You know. And if I do, I've got serious problems. Yeah. Oh, I cannot get that back in place. Hmm. But the center diff? It's the whole the whole power module. You slide it in and slide it out, but it's the first time it's ever been out. And yeah, it's very tight. Put some elbow, elbow grease. Yeah. <laughs> Start beating on it. If it don't go together, grab a bigger hammer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Eleven, Charlie, what's your next video? Uh, probably uh, we got some uh, ramps. Our, uh, Daniel did. So uh, if the weather permits, uh, let's see. Tomorrow we're gonna do a. Uh, the what you call the cratons. Okay. We, we're gonna try to jump uh, <laughs> at Daniel's house. <laughs> oh, awesome! No, nah, um, no. Nah. <laughs> we, <laughs> we should try to jump the house. Yeah, we probably could get a yeah, we, uh, You could <laughs> double stack them ramps and hit it. Yeah. yeah, he 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 got a pretty good deal, man. We got he got the uh, two ramps. Those are big. Those those are uh, big ramps. Uh, for what thirty something dollars, man. Oh yeah, yeah. Cool. I see RC bigger. He's actually building his own ramps now as well, and they actually look pretty cool. All right. Man, these magnets are so strong; it's hard to take the body off. <laughs> there we go. Put your fingers through the windshield. Yeah, almost. And so the magnets are on the that loop that you filled in. Yep. Okay. And they're also on the post, the body posts. Yeah. 
It does make it look way better for video. I wonder if Hemistorm's ever going to change his tune or if he's too stubborn. <laughs> Pfizer boy just said, and there's the Porsche. <laughs> Guys, it's 11.30 and I had a long day, so I'm going to um, take off here, but it was good hanging out. Oh, sounds good. Thanks for jumping in. Um, Steve, Later, Steve, Steve overall. Later. See you guys tomorrow. Later, bro. Bye. Yeah. Later. yeah, that MO6, I'm really happy with the platform and how it looks. Can't wait to see how it performs for rear-wheel drive there. It's going to be decent. Yeah, I also really like how it's accurate to the real thing. So you've got rear-wheel drive, rear motor. Should be, It should be cool. Yeah. How did that plastic piece hold up on your UDR again, John? The, the front plastic drive shaft? Yeah. How did that hold up again after you replaced it? Well, it's not broken again yet, and it's had some hard hits. So as long as you don't land it, nose it in hard on power, it should save itself because it, it has, like, some play, and it's got a cushion. Um, I, I think I just nosed it in real hard on power trying to get the nose to lift. So I'm, like, I'm on power trying to get the nose up, and then I stuffed it in, and it snapped it. But still, it should be should have been metal. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy for that price that they put a plastic drive shaft in, though. Yeah, you know? yeah. But at least if it breaks, you can still drive the truck because the rear one is metal. No. So it's good that it's not totally out of commission, but annoying annoying to repair. So now you got to order a, a new drive shaft. I already fixed it. Okay, so you, yeah. you, did, you did fix it and put the spare drive shaft back at the back? No, they're totally different. Okay. The, the rear one is a long metal dog bone, and the front one is like a traditional plastic splined Traxxas stuff that breaks. Okay. Which one is the spare one that you have on the truck? <laughs> oh, the spare one you get on the truck is the metal. Uh, rear. And I did break that one as well. I don't think oh, I'm... Okay have a video about that because i just i did it on a on a trip the last time um i snapped out the center of the uh of the mount like on the out drive i guess okay uh it smashed it so whatever i just swapped it with the spare it's hmm. a simple part that's inside that rear drive shaft that you should be able to repair but i don't think they sell it that the little part that breaks they only sell the whole drive shaft yeah, they're just, they're, it's by all or nothing with Traxxas. You know? <laughs> yeah. Not that I can complain. I've got three TRX 4s, so I keep spending my money on their stuff. Oh, no. No. TRX 4s are really well made, though. That is, yeah, I am yeah. impressed with that. I still, I, I'm like, who designed this for Traxxas? Because they knocked it out of the park. <laughs> yeah, they definitely did. They, they had a home run with that one. Like. <clears throat> But a, a lot of people keep pushing. I find a lot of people keep pushing the TRX4, like putting faster, faster motor and faster motor and and longer shocks and, and like modifying the heck out of it. And then they break it and then they're starting to say it's a piece of shit. Well, <laughs> you're, 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 you're not using it right. You're yeah. trying to push it too much. Yeah, you're putting a Mambo X with a 3300 KV motor in it. Like, what do you think is going to happen to it? Yeah. Who would do such a silly thing? <laughs> That's probably what you have in yours. <laughs> I did it to my Gen 8 because I didn't want to break my TRX4 all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I stick to the brushed motors in them. That's what they're designed for crawling like. So, is it? So, I'm still waiting for the parts to fix my Gen 8 from when I smashed it at the uh, Recon G6 when I broke the portal. Oh, yeah. And was it just red cat don't have the parts, is it? Uh, it's just A main slow to Canada. So, yeah, I just ordered a red cat part. Yeah. Which was in stock. It's just taking a sweet time to get here. Which part are you missing? Uh, it's it's smashed inside. It's the, um, uh, it's the actual outside of the axle. 
it's like the pumpkin of the axle. Okay. It's this. This is the part that's smashed. Now, why the heck did you smash that for? Because I was trying to get over a rock that was, then the tire was pinned, and I've got 4,600 kV of 3S power. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not designed to hold that power. Yeah. Now, uh, I do have a kit here, which I'm waiting for parts and waiting for stuff to build. So if ever you need parts, I do have a... Uh, uh, oh, yeah, I guess if I'm in a pinch, yeah, you've got the whole setup, the whole pack. And I also have this. So a whole oh, set of axles. The Gen 7 upgrade kit? Yeah. So it's a, it's a Gen 8 axle. It's a whole new set of axles. Wow. What, because, you have a Gen 7? Hey, no, I don't have oh, a Gen 7. Because of what you're planning on doing, I know. I'm, I am doing a 8x8 uh, eight eight Gen Red. 8 Red Cat. <sighs> Yeah. So that's what I'm going to be doing with this. It's going to be very cool. That'll be cool. And yep, by yep. Ugh. Yeah, that axle set is not cheap. That's like the, half the price of the whole pack, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> 200 and something. I can't remember how much it ended up, but for a set of portal axle, I said, ah, oh, it's going to be, it's going to be cool. And, uh, I've already talked to Chris at GCM Racing about a couple of different ways to get it done, and uh, he's willing to help, especially for a transfer case. I need him to build me a transfer case. Right. But he was telling me a whole bunch of different things, like we could do this, we could do that, and I told him I want to keep it as much as possible uh, red cat. Okay. So you're so going to use the same frame? I yeah. You I, shouldn't yeah. use the frame that much. Uh, he wanted me to use his motor, his transmission, and like do a bunch of stuff. And I said, "Well, I, I, I want to do it, Red Cat, right now. Maybe later we can convert it, but uh, right now I just want to build it Red Cat. So that'd be interesting. You want a Red Cat eight by eight, not a GCM eight? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fraction of the price." Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess I'm lucky. Like, cause my my two local hobby stores are Car Hobbies and Nitro Hobbies. So anything they have online, I can just walk into the store. Oh yeah, yeah. Nitro. And, I see yeah. Nitro has good prices a lot. A yeah. lot. Yeah. So if ever you need any uh, Red Cat uh, Gen Eight parts, I I do have some spare that you can actually get to me later if ever you're stuck and you really really need it. Okay. Thanks. Appreciate it. I don't have any crawls planned, but uh, that part should be here any day. I ordered it what feels like a month ago. Oh, yeah? I did the cheap A-Main shipping, the like the $1.99, and sometimes that takes four to six weeks. Great oh, hobby. Hey. Didn't have it or couldn't get it? Um, yeah, I don't know. I think uh, there was just some other stuff I was getting. Okay. Also from, from, oh, I know what it was. I get the you have like the credits you have to use by a certain amount of time. So I have to uh, use it. Cool. What time of body? Oh, what type of body I'm going to use? Eight eight. Uh, I'm going to show you. Oh, you are going to show all the secrets coming out. Yeah. <laughs> What year are you planning to build this? It's this going to be this winter. Okay. Because I want to see you build that Hercules thing you have got too. Hercules? What do you mean Hercules? Don't you have a semi? Yes. It's um, the semi truck. Yes, that one's actually next. Okay. So this is what I want to build with it. It's an 8x8 eight eight military truck that actually shoots rockets. Wow. Oh, that's going to be awesome, Frank. So what I want to do is exactly this with a front end, probably like this, so it will not be a crawler because attack mm -hmm. angle is no good. Mm -hmm. But what I want to do is actually do this at the back, which is going to be yeah. controllable and shoot. So I'm going to be shooting... Uh, those rocket with the uh, rocket fuel, uh, not rocket fuel, but those uh, insert there, the electric. Uh, like the Nerf? 
nerf things. Yeah, yeah. Not That's... not the nerf. The 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 one that um, you put a little um, little engine in it, and you you buy them at the hobby store there. Sweet. Let's go Artil- artillery. Yeah. Yeah. There's a guy I follow there. He's a Russian guy. He does all the WPL stuff, but he does he puts like rocket launchers in the back of them. But he actually puts fireworks in them and be launching fireworks. Crazy. Like yeah, he's yeah, like the most. Yeah, that's another option. For yeah. Ever, yeah. Yeah. But this yeah. is what I'd like to build, and uh, it's going to be a 3D printed in the front and probably the back also. But I got to be careful how I do the rocket because if there is fire that comes out, these have mm-hmm. to be metal. Yes. So. But that's my vision for this truck. So it's going to take me a bit to get the parts, but I'll get them. It's going to be sweet. Yeah. All right, guys, it's near midnight, so I'm going to jump out because 5 o'clock comes early in the morning. All right. Have a good night. Yeah, have a good night. Good night, guys. Yeah, and uh, we've been go- broadcasting for two hours, and I usually keep these for two hours. So uh, we'll do a round table to say bye, and uh, we'll end the live stream. And uh, oh. you have a little bit of after hours on Zoom. So uh, let's start with uh, Sh- uh, 11 Charlie. Are you still there to say bye? Yes, yes, I'm here. So uh, let it, guys. Thank you for having me. Be safe out there. Sean Jarcy, you still there? You said bye already. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to hang up. So, <laughs> right. bottom bottom right, there's an end end uh, stream. Oh, uh, top right on mine says leave. Okay. All right. Night, guys. Thanks for having me. Later. Thanks for putting the chat. Later, Later. Sean. Later, Later, Frank and John. Night. See you, John. Night, Cruiser. Say bye. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching. Cool. And thanks a lot, guys, for tuning in. And I'm almost like Steve-O tonight. I got a messy hair. I should have uh, combed or did like Steve-O D and wore a hat. It would look better. Anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate it. And uh, keep those batteries full and uh, your finger on the throttle and have some fun. Thanks. Talk to you guys later.